hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today we'll be discussing my top 10 favorite Walt Disney World rides. Now this is just an opinion based video and it will not include things such as the Carousel of Progress or It's Tough to Be a Bug. I consider those more along the lines of a show and I will be doing a top 10 shows video next. So hope you enjoy it. Number one. The Haunted Mansion opened with the park on October 1st, 1971 and was obviously inspired by the Disneyland version. The main difference is being the exteriors, where the Disneyland version featured a southern style plantation home. The Disney World version is based off of two Pennsylvania mansions, the Harry Packer Mansion in Jim Thorpe and the Sayer Mansion in Bethlehem, which is about 10 miles north of Allentown. It is yet another Disney classic that features the work of legendary Imagineers such as Yale Gracie and Rolly Crump. I just did a biography on Rolly Crump in my last video if you'd like to learn more about him and the mansion. Did you know that while building the original one in 1969 at Disneyland, they knew they were going to build a secondary one, so they built two of everything in the beginning. This ride is an absolute must for anybody visiting the park. Whether your hundredth time or your first, they're always dying to meet you. Number two. Pirates of the Caribbean opened on December 15th, 1973. Obviously again, inspired and pulled from the Disneyland version, the difference is being that Disney World's was larger and doesn't feature a New Orleans-esque mansion, but instead a 17th, 18th century Spanish style building. Yet another example with works done by the likes of Exitensio and Leota Tombs, for example, as known on their work and other great classics such as The Haunted Mansion. This swashbuckling adventure has thrilled guests for almost 50 years at the Walt Disney World. It is a classic and will continue to live on for many, many generations. Number three. Submitted for your approval, the Hollywood Tower Hotel, otherwise known as the Tower of Terror. It is an absolute masterpiece that opened back in MGM Studios on July 22, 1994. The tower is one of many of non-Disney intellectual properties introduced by Michael Eisner. It features the works of the one and only Rod Serling and has replica Twilight Zone props found throughout the ride, such as the slot machine from The Fever or the dummy from Caesar and Me. Whether a fan of the Twilight Zone or a thrill seeker alike, you're in for a real treat, or should I say, a real drop. Number four. Rise of the Resistance opened on December 5th, 2019. Though it has been plagued with technical issues from the beginning, and some saying the ride is more of a mess than a masterpiece. But if you, like myself, are fortunate enough to get a ride on a perfect run with no glitches or animatronics in B mode, it's a stunner. Never in my life have I been so impressed nor immersed in a ride. Between the full-size at-ats, the exploding scenery, and all the other authentic fun things found throughout the ride, you will duck, lean, and scream your way through space. Number 5. Spaceship Earth opened on October 1st, 1982, with the opening of Epcot Center. This blast of the past takes you from the dawn of man to the modern day, and explains how communication not only changed humanity, but what where and when a big invention came along to change the landscape of what we knew at the time. This ride was supposed to get a big refurbishment for Walt Disney World's 50th, but that has now been put on hold. Check out the classic version while you still can. Number six. Hello and I'll be your skipper through the jungle this time around. No, I'm just kidding. But the Jungle Cruise is yet another classic pulled from Disneyland. It opened with the park on October 1st, 1971. And in this jungle, you'll find elephants, gators, treasure, caves, headhunters, and more puns than you knew were possible in eight minutes. Plus, from November to December, check out the Jingle Cruise, a holiday-themed overlay. Please contact Trader Sam's at your earliest convenience. He's just trying to get ahead. Number seven. Expedition Everest opened at Disney's Animal Kingdom on April 9th, 2006. 
It is home to the largest of the four mountains of Walt Disney World. It was created and designed by legendary Imagineer Joe Rohde. This train ride takes you deep into the Forbidden Mountains and is a thrill ride from start to finish. However, due to an engineering flaw in the mountain, the ride features the now sometimes called Disco Yeti. He is called that due to the fact that he used to swing at passers-by. However, he was causing structural damage, so now he just raises an arm while growling behind a strobe light, hence the name Disco Yeti. Nonetheless, it does not detract from the ride, and is still a fun and must-do no matter what age. Are you brave enough to face the Yeti? Number 8. Flight of Passage at the Land of Pandora opened on May 27th, 2017. It is one of two rides featured in the land, and though personally I am not a huge fan of the Avatar and the Avatar movies, this ride is absolutely breathtaking. From scenic views to mystic scents, and the feeling of the Banshee flying, breathing, and responding underneath of you is like no else. This is an absolute must ride at the Animal Kingdom, and an absolute standout amongst all the parks. It's very much similar to Soren, but in some respects, even more exciting. Number 9 Soren, like so many on this list, originated in Disneyland. Starting its life as Soren around California, this ride eventually took a trip and landed in Epcot on May 5th, 2005. This show was supposed to be a short stint and not last too long, but due to popular demand, the ride ended up staying permanently in the location. The ride stayed the same until June 17th, 2016, when it was given a fresh new video and became Soren Around the World, where you hang glide over some of the most iconic locations, complete with picturesque views, heavenly scents, and feelings like no other. Number 10. Rock and Roller Coaster featuring Aerosmith opened at what was the time MGM Studios on July 29th, 1999. This hard rocking romp will take you from the studios of GeForce Records to the streets of LA with the bad boys from Beantown and a super stretch limo that goes 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. This ride will have you screaming along with one of America's classic rock groups and is a must do for any Aerosmith fan or adrenaline junkie as it is one of the most thrilling rides at Walt Disney World. We also have two honorable mentions for you. Our first honorable mention is Test Track, which opened at Epcot on December 19th, 1998, with GM as the lead sponsor. It showed people what it was like to test a car to its limits and to be a living crash test dummy, which as a child I found very exciting. It took the excitement of slinging a car around, but removed the consequences like death or injury. But that all changed, however, on December 3rd, 2012, Almost 14 years after the ride had opened, the GM contract had expired and Chevrolet started the new one. This is when the facility changed from a very 90s era testing plant to a very modern design shop where you design your own vehicle and see how it performs under the different conditions. I miss the old version of this ride. I think the crash test dummies and the signs and the tests were a lot more fun than the modern sleek designs today. This ride may have made by top 10 before its refurbishment in 2012. Our other honorable mention is the People Mover. Opened at Walt Disney World on July 1st, 1975 at Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom. Like a lot of classics, it originated in Disneyland on July 2nd, 1967. However, nowadays there is only one version of the ride left. Because back on May 22nd, 1998, an updated and much faster version was introduced at Disneyland, called Rocket Rods. However, due to an error when calculating what the then 31-year-old tracks could handle, the Rocket Rods caused irreparable damage to the tracks, and it was closed forever. However, the version at Walt Disney World has something that the Disneyland version never had. A miniature model of a city. That miniature model is actually the original model for Epcot, Walt's planned experimental prototype community of tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
and my reviews of my top 10 favorite rides at Walt Disney World. Be sure to check out my next video, Top 10 Shows, coming later in the week. Please subscribe, like, and leave some comments down below. Thanks.